Hello and welcome back or welcome to Miss Finance if this is your first time on the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about ethics. So again, I know this is a subject that a lot of you struggle with and it's understandable why. Because the first time you're introduced to ethics there's a lot to cover or it definitely feels that way the first time um, you start looking at the subject. But ethics is really, really important both in practice and in theory and is very, very high up the list for both the AAT, the ACA, ACCA, CMA, SIPFA, all the qualifications because ethics is the key to everything that we do and it's key that we maintain ethics and it's key that we also keep our credibility as accountants. So the first thing that we need to know is that professional ethics is all based on the IESBA code of ethics. So all AAT students and members are bound to the ethics code. So the IESBA has set out five fundamental principles. So if you just remember the number five, here that will help you go a whole long way. So what are the five principles? So the five principles are integrity, professional competence and due care, objectivity, confidentiality, and then professional behaviour. So you can't just have one of these ethical principles, you have to have all five. You need to be maintaining all five at all times throughout your accounting or finance professional career. So let's go into each of them in a little bit more detail. Integrity. So this is about being more than just honest. So integrity means that you are an honest individual as a professional and with business relationships and in your personal life. So about being honest and straightforward but it's more than that because you're going to have situations in your career where someone whether that be a client or a colleague that you're working with and it might be sometimes somebody who is more senior than you who will act in a dishonest way and you need to have the ability to stand up for what is correct what is right in that situation and to challenge that so it doesn't matter if you're an AAT student on day one you go into a firm of accountants and you see something wrong. It doesn't matter that it's your first day. You need to be able to act with integrity, hold your hand up and say, this is not right to whoever it might be. So that's what integrity is all about. So, you know, some examples here would be, say, if you're on an audit. So you go to an audit for the first time. You've never met this client before today. So say the client works in manufacturing. And imagine that this client is difficult. So they're very used to getting their own way. They're used to getting their own way with staff members, with their own customers, with suppliers, etc. And you walk in knowing full well this client's difficult. But you spot something in their financial statements that's wrong. As an auditor, you turn around and say, okay, these are my audit findings. I believe that you're accounting for this incorrectly. And they challenge you and say, we're accounting for this correctly and we are not going to change our numbers. Now, later on down the line, when you get into studies in a lot more detail, you'll find that the financial statements need to give a true and fair view to external stakeholders and internal stakeholders. To give you an example, if there's somebody looking to invest in a company and they look at this individual's financial statements, versus another and they decide to invest in this person's company well if there's a mistake or an error or something that's misleading in those financial statements then they have been misled so we've got to make sure at all times that financial statements give a true and fair view so again going back if you find that there's something wrong something's not been accounted for correctly and you challenge that and then the client says i'm not going to change that there is an opportunity in an auditor's report to say that we found the following misstatements and the client will not change those and therefore this is our view of the financial statements and the consequences might be that you might lose that client there's all kinds of negative impacts that could come from that but you need to have the integrity in the first place to say that's not right and that's what integrity is so moving on objectivity so objectivity is where in effect you're keeping an open mind and you're not letting your own personal bias affect your judgment. 
okay so you ignore any personal bias so objectivity is in effect the opposite of subjectivity so subjectivity is where you personally are looking at something and your view and only your view and opinion count so objectivity is where you mustn't let professional or business judgment because of bias a conflict of interest or in undue influence of others affect an outcome so you need to be taking into account everything before making a judgment so an example of a conflict to your objectivity here it might be that you again you've got a client so your client let's just say that your client is called james okay so you've known james for many years and you like james you know he's a friendly chap he gives to charity he looks after his staff he's just an all-round nice person is james however when you come to look at james's financial statements you realise that he's overstated the bank. And what I mean by that is that he said he's got more in his bank than he actually does. So if you were not being objective here, you would just take this for it. So if he said, I've got 100k in my bank, then you wouldn't do too much to go out of your way to disagree with him because of his credibility, etc. So he, by doing that, you're taking a very subjective approach. Somebody who is objective would ignore all of the above and they would almost in their mind pretend that they don't know James. They've got no idea who James is. It doesn't matter what they know about him previously, they're going to base all of their facts on what they find in these financial statements and they're going to form a view from that. So that is objectivity. Okay, next up we have professional competence and due care so this is where at all times in your career on your profession you need to maintain a level of professional knowledge and skill so as we know each year tax legislation can change we also know that the lights of uk gap standards can change similarly IFRS, so the International Financial Reporting Standards, can change. So the whole idea is that every single year you undertake what they call CPD, so that is continual professional development, and there's so many hours that you have to complete every year in order to make sure that you are competent at all times you know what you're talking about and you're able to do the job so it's about being competent and able so an example would be let's say that your firm of accountants specialize in law so if we say that 98 percent of your client base are legal firms the solicitors etc and you do both accounts preparation, tax and audit. Okay, so you get you get introduced to a tender of doctors practices. So you're invited to bid on gaining the job of various doctors practices. So if you were to undertake the work of the doctors practices accounts and tax work it would gain you an additional 400k a year in revenue okay so you're introduced to do this but you have no one in your firm that specializes in medical so medical in itself medical finance is a specialized subject so in this case if you were to go ahead and take that client or bid for that tender then you don't necessarily have the relevant skills and professional competence in place to undertake the job so the best thing for you to do in that case would be to actually decline. So you wouldn't tender for that. Or 
The other thing would be to train your staff or to hire another member of staff who is competent in medical finance to undertake the work. But at all times you need to make sure that you maintain this professional competence and due care. So number four, confidentiality. Now, if you work in finance, you are very privy to a lot of sensitive data. So for instance, you see a set of financial statements before they are released to the public. So before a set of financial statements are submitted to company's house, you get to see what those numbers are and how well or not so well a company has performed. You also get to see wages information. So that might be the wages information of a client or it might be your colleagues information if you work in an industry for instance. So what we need to do at all times is maintain this confidentiality. So there's the whole thing of the nice to know and need to know, okay? You might literally sit next to another colleague who's not privy to wages information. So they're not allowed to see payroll for your company that you work for, you are. So for them, it would be nice to know, well, what is everybody in the office on? How much salary does everybody earn? But they don't need to know. So there's a difference between nice to know and need to know. So you need to make sure that you've put safeguards in place to make sure that they do not see this wages information. So confidentiality in itself is where you must not disclose any confidential professional business information or use it to your personal advantage unless you have explicit permission to disclose it or a legal or professional right or duty to disclose it. And finally, we have professional behaviour. So you must comply with relevant laws and regulations and avoid any action that may bring disrepute to the profession. So what this means is that at all times when you are, for instance, on an audit on site with a client, you must act professionally. So this means that you need to be conscious at all times of your actions, whether that be at work or outside of work. So let's leave it there. So I hope you found this video useful today. If you like the video or you found it useful, then hit the like button because it does help with the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, consider subscribing and I shall see you on the next video.